show you the latest updates of our load bearing tar placing tool. The most important thing is it's going to be placed now in community tools, uh, MIAP tools, and it's going to be delivered to all users uh, in the next couple of weeks. The main improvement uh, is that we added the support of uh, Stuxo 100 uh, system. Pretty much everything that is uh, working for D3 is working now for uh, Stuxo 100. The next important thing is we added clamping uh, for the towers. We uh, have the clamping plates, these and uh, um, nuts uh, above the U-heads. Also, we've added um, uh, automatically generated wooden wedges for the feet and for the bases, automatically calculated uh, and placed in the correct positions in, uh, on top of the, feet, the foot or on the head. And also we updated the export function where we show the, all the information necessary to uh, create the wedges and um, also how to place them. And uh, in the uh, schedule, how many of them we would need. The structure I have chosen for today's demo is a real world uh, project. It's a ramp, uh, it's three quarters of a full circle. It has a constant height between the two slabs. And uh, for simplicity, I created another view that uh, the walls are isolated. So the first thing that we need are two, uh, usually we need only one um, level on which we place the helper families, but in this case, because the the slabs are go going up and down and we will need to fit all of the uh, helper families in between. That's why we have towers high and towers low. So after we have uh, the two planes uh, created, uh, we can go in plan view and launch the low bearing tower uh, tool. So the first thing is we select the system. In this case, we're going to do it with Taxo. 100. Uh, we're going to do it with the single towers. From here, you can choose how many spans you want to have, but we just uh, have only one and 1.5 meters. Um, the plywood thickness will make it 21 uh, millimeters. The secondary grid is 200 for H20. Primary grid is uh, WS10 with 100. The type, uh, the orientation is uh, frame. Uh, the primary grid orientation is parallel to the frame uh, because the load. Uh, is not very high, the slab is very thin. We choose uh, the, the most economical combination of frames. Face base family is good enough for, for this example. And here, the most important thing is to choose wooden wedges at the bottom. Uh, the reason we have a, a drop, drop down menu for that is because we can choose not to have in case we have like a, a stepped uh, structure where we can have different extension of the legs without um, needing of wedges. So the next step is click create and this is going to create a um, um, family. So we just place it here and here and then we can align it based on our needs and we will use the um, array function to arrange it the way we want. After we arrange the towers with array function, we have to make sure that they are in the appropriate uh, planes because when we arrange them initially, they will be, for example, in the one that we chose as uh, the current uh, working plane. And then we have to select this half that we need to go uh, on the other one and manually through changing uh, uh, work plane, we have to shift them down. So as you can see, the, this part on the right is on the upper plane and this part on the left is on the lower plane and they're all in between the two frames. Next step is to uh, rename the towers. As you can see, they all have the name of T0. So we simply click the load bearing tower two and go to the second tab. Make sure that the prefix is whatever you need and the starting number is uh, one. So we click the button, select everything Click finish and we have them uh, renamed. If you look like the uh, from the top view, it's one, two, three, all the way to 10 and 11 to uh, 26. It works um, as it should be. After renaming, the next step would be to generate the 3D towers. This would be in the third tab. We, it's as simple as clicking the button, selecting everything, selecting everything and click finish button. This would take um, maybe 
20 seconds I will not pause it just to show you the real time uh, that it takes to load them the, uh, the time depends on the height of the towers and the number of towers the more you have the more uh, time would take so this is this is the, 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 the result and we already have the towers and as you can see they are generated around the structure um, and if we can zoom here to show the new thing which is the wedge the wedge is a family that uh, has x and y uh, size so this is the size in both directions and we have inclinations in different um, in x and y direction and these are the four corners the height in the four corners of the wedge which are used for exporting function into excel um, these families are generated for the top and for the bottom um, I will hide the structure so as you can see we have a wedge for every head and also the clamping plate D the locking rod and the wing nut placed in the correct position and also it's taken into account the increase of the height of the beam uh, depending on the inclination of each beam uh, as you can see every wedge is different uh, depending on where, where it sits so this one has inclination of minus 55 and 4.9 and this one is minus 55 and 6.6 .6. this one is minus 1.3 and 7.93 and this one is minus 1.3 and 10.4. I have also created a uh, couple of sections just to show how the uh, wedges look like and to show that they follow the structure. So if we go to this one, we can see that um, if we connect them with uh, reference plane, they do follow the inclination. Uh, and if you connect this one to this one, follow the inclination as well uh, and also we have uh, I mean I can show all the sections but they're trying the same thing and uh, they're following the structure as it is the other new thing is the updated uh, material list you can find it under schedules and uh, docker load bearing tower material list as you can see we are grouping them by article number and now we're grouping them by type this is to show that the family, which is the same, which uh, can be um, uh, shown as a top and as a bottom one. So this shows that we need four of each for the top and bottom. This is the material that we need for the rest of the tower. And this is a breakdown for the entire structure from 1 to 26. The last new thing is the new export function. Uh, if you finish with uh, the design you can go to export and click export to excel and then select the entire structure everything at the same time click finish and this will automatically open excel and start building a table in this table we have a screenshot that shows uh, what the parameters that we discussed earlier d1 to d4 are so this is the height of this side height of this side height of that side and that side this is x and this is y and it's represented in the chart uh, x is uh, here x y is here d1 to 4 are here this is the number of legs the number of legs are shown here this is it this is for the top this is for the bottom and the numbering always starts when you look at the number where the name of the tower is to the bottom right of it it's num like number one and then we go counterclockwise one two three and four so even the tower is flipped around you have to look from the other side look from where the the, la the label is and start counting from the bottom right uh, counterclockwise so this is the first step that um, uh, the two is generating uh, and this would include the information for the um, wedges how to be uh, fabricated and in the next tab uh, it will show actually yeah, we just finished with this one and started creating the second one uh, this tab is showing uh, it was available before this is not new I'm just explaining it again it's a um, uh, now we have a, a put a, a picture here that shows the which leg is one two three and four and also uh, we have the tower, the leg number, and this is the coordinates of the base for each tower. This is the coordinates for the uh, heads of each tower. This is the extension of the head, the extension of so uh, extension of the base, extension of the head, and the total length of each leg. As you can see, 
to show that everything's correct. All heights of the legs are the same because the ramp has the same height throughout the entire length. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.